This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Off Book, the improvised musical podcast. Earwolf has a brand new show for you. It's available now. I think you're really going to love it. Jessica McKenna and Zach Reno are two of the funniest people out there. They're also two of the most musical, musical. Together, they have made Off Book, the improvised musical podcast. Each episode, Jess and Zach are joined by a hilarious improviser like Paul F. Tompkins or Mary Holland, and together, along with a live piano, they make a new musical on the spot. If you're a regular listener, you already know Jessica's one of the rap battle champs here. She always brings great characters like It's Your Boy Troy, Power Wheels Beth, Tiny Gymnast Dagmar the Small. So check it out. This show is pure, unadulterated musical joy in a podcast. Subscribe to Off Book from Earwolf in Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast? Rubber buns and liquor. What'd you have for dinner? Rubber buns and liquor. What'd you do to your mom last night? Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Ah, yes. Thank you to Fat Dick, the overweighter investigator, <laughs> for that catchphrase submission. <laughs> off to a rollicking start here, breaking off another hundo. It is indeed my pleasure to break off one more hundo here. A very special day. I mean, we're uh, balls deep in jewel here. Uh, who am I? Sean Penn? Uh, but we are. It's, it is the fifth Monday of a July, which is a very special day uh, when we're balls deep in a month. And uh, we're breaking off a hundo 501, episode 501. Thanks so much to anyone and everyone, I guess, who listened to our 500th episode and said such nice things about us. Uh, I want to thank the Daily Beast and the, uh, I wanna, what is another word for article writer? I don't know, author of the article, um, Matt, uh, who did that wonderful oral history of the podcast. Uh, if you're interested at all in the podcast history, go check it out. And uh, thanks to all of you for making uh, the f past 500 so great. Um, we may be breaking off a hundo. We may just be breaking off, who knows, like another 20. But whatever it is, as long as this lasts, I'm happy to do it and happy to be your host. My name is Scott Ackerman, and uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Uh, perhaps you're a new listener and you, are, uh, you just started last week. Well, uh, this is the show, and I've said it before, and quite honestly, I feel like I'm going to say it again. This is the show where we talk to interesting people. It's a catchphrase that's sweeping the nation. People love it. People, when you're looking in that uh, Apple Podcasts or on Stitcher Premium, uh, when you're looking for a show and saying, I, I want to listen to a show, but uh, I don't want a show where people talk to boring people. When you see this show described as the show where they talk to interesting people, doesn't that just pique the interest? <laughs> Doesn't it just make you say, that's it. That's the one that I want to click on. Well, we thank goodness that you did. Uh, and today is no exception when we talk to these interesting people because we have a couple, and in fact, an entire program full of newbies, or as I call them, noobs, uh, to the show. Uh, and uh, it, it's very exciting to talk to these people. And let me introduce our first, uh, as I call as I call it, the guest of honor spot. Wow. The the first guests are always the guests of honor. And uh, they're, they're the most important ones. They're the ones when people say, I want to hear a podcast where they talk to interesting people. These first people better be interesting. And that is the onus I place upon you. You better be interesting. Uh, they, they have perhaps several things in common. But the one thing that I know they share in common is they are in a musical combination together. Uh, they are in a musical combination by the name of Manchester Orchestra from Atlanta, Georgia. We have Robert McDowell and Andy Hull. Yes, sir. Manchester Orchestra. Hello. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi. Thank you for that intro. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I think it would be impolite not to give you an intro. You're right. And, and just confusing. for you to start talking and people would have to figure out who you were by context clues. But let's let's pretend that that happened. Okay. How How long could you go... How short of a time before people figured out who you were? I don't think they ever would. You don't, you don't think? No, no. Not even if we were to 
uh, say you have an album that just came out called A Black Mile to the Surface. That might that might tip that, someone that off. Tip they, someone off, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but mostly no. But mostly no. Uh, you guys are a great band. I've been a fan for, gosh, probably somewhere in the twelve hundred days. Okay, kind wow. of uh, days. the realm. <laughs> Somewhere I've never heard in there. anyone talk about being a fan for days. <laughs> well, I count them off. I basically, when I Every X day. off days on the calendar, I'm like, am I still a fan? Wow. Is it consecutive or have there been No, days? no, they've jumped around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple when I was born. Sure. <laughs> um, but uh, you're a great band. Your last album, Cope, was uh, a breakthrough album for you guys. Is that safe to say? I, I think so. It was It was different for us. We tried to focus on making a record that was... Almost like our version of a punk rock record, really mm. fast and... Punker rock. Punker rock than yeah. what we had done before. And then this new album is sort of a total departure from that. And mm-hmm. we to so does that confuse people when people are like, oh man, can't wait to hear this Manchester orchestra with their punker style rock. Right. And then they, and they, they turn on it. this, well, you know? Well, we've been doing that since we started the band. So immediately with our second record, it was different from our first record. And so I think our fans sort of caught on by the third record that sounded nothing like the ones before. I think they started to figure out that we were going to try and change things every time. What's next? Ska? Yes. Great. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a Mighty Mighty Boss Tones feel? Or if you're from, you know, the, the small Christian community that we both grew up in, a band called the OC Supertones. Oh, interesting. The OC Supertones. <laughs> did the OC stand for Orange County, and yet they were from Georgia? They weren't from Georgia, and I believe it did stand for Orange County. Interesting. Now, I am an OC Supertone myself in Originally. the sense of I'm, I'm from Orange County. Okay, but not in the ska band. I am not in a ska band, although I was at one time. What was the name of that band? <laughs> the Naked Postman. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Uh, the, that, but that was the 80s. You know how that was. How did it go? Uh, how did what go? The, the tenure of the band? Yeah. Uh, we were together for approximately one year, and we our first gig was at a pizza place, and uh, everyone was moshing, and they stood up on tables and broke all of the tables, and the pizza place was going to sue us. Awesome. And then uh, our drummer's father was a lawyer, and, he, and we were like, his dad's a lawyer, and, and they backed off. They're like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and then we played a few parties, backyard parties, had them shut down. That's and an amazing first show. It was a really good for Angelo's Pizza down there in Fullerton. I bet they're not around any longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nowhere for anybody to sit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. People just putting pizza on their laps. Uh, and then uh, then we broke up, and uh, the drummer went on to the, the little band called No Doubt, and he is the drummer of No Doubt uh, currently. And so how, how do they do? They, you know, for a while they were a Living Color cover band. True story. <laughs> really? <laughs> And, uh, well, they did one Living Color song. Uh, and then uh, they went on to uh, Hometown Glory. Wow. They, they truly are the OC Supertones. But um, you guys are from Atlanta, Georgia. Did you grow up together? We did, yeah. We met in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, You've been awfully quiet on all this, by the way. You have something to hide? What's going on? <laughs> I have Robert? everything to hide. It's a lot of secrets. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of secrets, so uh, we grew Sounds up like together. Sounds like American but... Idol. <laughs> We weren't, we weren't allowed to talk. We weren't allowed to look at each other. So you guys, how, how, uh, how, at what age did you glom onto each other, if I may be so I bold? I was 13, you were 16, mm-hmm. and we were at this small, horrible, private Christian school. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we would carpool back, and he would drive me home, and we would go to my basement and just kind of started making music together. Wow. Yeah, he was running a studio in his basement at like 13 years old. Really? A full, like, yeah, you I mean, had equipment and yeah, a board for, and all that? Yeah, I just figured it would make me really popular if I got into engineering <laughs> in uh, middle school and high well, school. I mean, some 16-year-old like, wants to hang out with you now. It paid off. Yes. And he, was turned, a, he was a very cool 16 year Very cool. <laughs> really? <laughs> Take my word for it. <laughs> uh, Andy, you're a, you're a guitarist and the lead singer. Is that safe to say? Yes, it is. Uh, at what point, when you're strumming a, a guitar, you're like, hey, I'm pretty good of this what if i tried <laughs> joke songs first you know, really yeah was, like what I, I wrote a song about the 1994 braves baseball which was america's I, team and when <laughs> yes about how and there was there was a strike that year so i thought it was pretty clever they had a, a lot of them that's how you get people out good call <laughs> <laughs> that's what the umpire said <laughs> you're out <laughs> that's another thing he said but that's a different story oh say <laughs> <laughs> crack of the bat Play ball. Touch them all. Um, so there was a strike, and you wrote a joke song about it. Was, yeah, so stuff like that, you know, and cover mm-hmm. songs. What was the title of this song? Um, 1994 Braves Baseball. <laughs> Great. 
Do you want uh, to hear some of it? Sure, I do, yeah. So, go like... Uh, you have a guitar next to you, don't you? I do. Do you remember how to do it? I mean... I can we'll, we can pause for I, a second I, while you... Do you remember these chords? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Call out these chords. Here's, here's a G. There we go. So, I'd go... Mark Limke. <laughs> Jeff Blauser. And Terry Pendleton. It's taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm enjoying it. These guys were... Some of my favorite gentlemen. <laughs> gentlemen, wow. <laughs> and then I named my record label Favorite Gentleman, and it's still called that to this day. Crazy. Okay, I knew that about your record label, but that's where it all comes from. Do people know that story? Is this exclusive? I don't think this is exclusive. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. You're that's very incredible. Uh, at what point did someone say to you, hey, man, you, uh, your voice is pretty good. Maybe you could sing like songs about girls and. It wasn't then. And fuck it. <laughs> 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 right, that's that's what it turned into for me, big time. Um, no one ever s really said that for a really long time. Um, really? Yeah. It, what it, about you, Robert? You're sitting there, you're three years younger. Do you ever say to Andy over here, like, hey, man, you got a good voice? Yeah, lots of people told you that. You okay. also <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just don't remember. I just had a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. Um, do it you, was When you receive a compliment... Are you? Do you deflect it or do you uh, absorb? No, I'm really. It? I'm grateful for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's. I'm, I, mm -hmm. I love compliments. A huge fan mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it wasn't like. Well, I think you can have as many compliments as you want, but it takes one person being an asshole. Yeah, and, and that's you, the one you remember. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's yes. Exactly. Who told you you had a, a bad voice? Because when I was growing up, I remember when I was maybe eight or so. I was singing around the house, and my brother said, "Oh, you have a terrible voice," and I took that to be I had a terrible voice and I grew up then knowing I had a terrible mm -hmm. voice and anytime there was singing or anything I would go oh I can't sing and it took me like trying it I think I remember when I was 15 I was I was cast in a musical and I had a solo and I was like uh, I can't sing but what if I did it as like a joke song and then I sang it as a joke and they're like you sound fine right. it, was, it was in key and everything that's yeah, awesome exactly they're like you have sing. a really good ear why are you wow. why do you think you can't sing I'm like oh I guess my brother told me that like seven <laughs> years ago what did that happen to you or I do remember uh, yeah trying out for a, a solo or something at you know the church play or, or something like that and in not getting it and them saying, you know, it's well, you just it's not really your thing, you know. Oh, um, why do people? Why do we do this to each other? I don't know. I don't know. Let's build each other up. You know what I mean? You have a great voice, Robert. You have a beautiful voice. Yeah. It was actually your brother who told me mine was bad. <laughs> really? I, I didn't. <laughs> he see really gets around. Yeah. <laughs> Robert uh, was also recording his own music back then as well. So you know, we just kind your of your own songs that you were writing and singing and performing. All the above. The yes. triple threat. Yes, the triple threat. <laughs> And yeah, and back then it was just, you would either like rival with people or you would kind of be like, you're uh, kind of scared to do this but want to do it. Yeah. Were there rival bands that you were in competition totally. with? Do you yeah. remember any of these bands? I do. Are they still around? No. Ah, you've crushed them. It was over. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the names of these bands? You recall? Well, my first band was called East on Autry. East um, on Autry, my, which sounds like uh, perhaps local directions. That it you was. Were... My neighborhood was called the Falls of Autry Mill. And mm. I, you would go east into it. Um, mm -hmm. And then my second band was Manchester Orchestra. So I didn't really go through a whole list of, uh, of different ones. That one ended up sticking. Robert? Mine was called L.A. for two reasons, from the uh, Elliot Smith song, but also it's really easy to write on a CD. That's right. That's true. So, yeah. And then it was that into Manchester. So mm -hmm. we weren't rivals. No, we were not. No, you guys were buds. Yeah. And then but there he were... started dating uh, my sister, who he is now married to. So we're actually brother in law. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great story. So we are. We Do you are... both love her? <laughs> At times. <laughs> Different ways. She's going to be so pissed. <laughs> She's such a big fan of like everything that this studio does, too. What, uh, and the, okay, you have a band. It's great. Whatever. Let's talk about this. So the day, the day that you, first of all, the day you have a little inkling that you're like, I think I like Andy's sister. When, when was that? That was in your parents' basement, and we were watching Taxi Driver, like any 13-year-old <laughs> <Great. 13 -year> would. 13-year-old <laughs> watching Taxi Driver. And I remember being like, holy shit, she's watching Taxi Driver. How old is she at this point? She's 13 as well. She's 13 as well. Yeah. You guys are the same age. Mm -hmm. Great. So you're bonding over watching a movie that's very inappropriate yeah. to I watch. I used to get in trouble with his sister who for showing Robert all these like crazy movies, but I was I was into like Raging Bull and Taxi Driver. And right. Like now, that, have you so. boned down with his sister? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, no. 
Okay, so you guys are all in the basement, just the, th- the three of you at this point, or? <laughs> this is so good. Um, I think there were other people around. Some other people but, milling but back I, and I forth. definitely, rather than getting attracted to, like, his brother Daniel or his mom and dad, I was like, sure. I'm, I'm a... She made the most You weren't sense. interested in a polyamorous relationship with all of his no, 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 relatives. No, no, no. You were interested in just it, the yeah, one. Yeah, it, it but he had didn't have to clear. do with the uh, relationship to him. It had to do with the person that I was attracted to. Right, right, right. Now, did you then act upon these feelings or were they unrequited for a bit and then you caught back up with her? That's, uh, we dated from 14 to 16 and then mm-hmm. broke up for like six months and then we've yeah, been together. And then I since. asked Robert to join the band while they were broken up, which was a hot topic at the time. Wow. A lot of drama. Hot topics. And then they got back together and married. And then you got back together. That is a sweet, sweet story. I don't think I've ever heard such a sweet story. Meeting your your wife at 13 watching Taxi Driver. <laughs> it's just like the movies. Yeah. <laughs> that is great beautiful. Rom-com. This is beautiful. And, I, I, and anytime I listen to a Manchester Orchestra album from now on, I'll hear that little bit of loving in every song. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. I, I, I really enjoy that. And are you uh, in any kind of relationship uh, with anyone? I, I, am, I am. I've been married. I'll be married uh, 10 years next year i have a three-year-old daughter Mm -hmm. named Maisie. um and yeah i've known my wife also since high school is Maisie named after any of your old bands or anything like that or (laughs) she's she's actually named after a a friend's dog Um, (laughs) really yeah like we couldn't find the name for so long we just didn't know and we, we couldn't agree my wife and i and i remember that my friend who plays in another band called brand new had these really cool dog names and we were out to dinner with him with my wife and I was like what are the names and he said yeah Maisie I was like I love that name and he said that's on the list I said oh shit wow that's her name now so not only a great name but a fascinating story (laughs) and uh (laughs) so sounds like a great dinner (laughs) I'd love to see the movie of that dinner (laughs) wow um should I take it again (laughs) (laughs) who could who could play you in that Al Pacino I see um, well, that's that's really nice. And you guys, so you guys have been friends for a long time. You're uh, p- practically related. You're in a musical band. Uh, 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 it, it must be sunshine all the time for you guys. Mm. We've learned how to, you know, be in a band with each other and how to make records with each other. And, and working on this uh, score that we did last year was another sort of. Which, by the way, uh, uh, sharp-eared listeners uh, who maybe know a little bit about you know that you scored the movie Swiss Army Man. Yes. Starring Daniel Radcliffe and yes. Paul Dano. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and when we were working on that, we had to only use our voices. The directors asked us to not use any instruments. And so that was even a further sort of lesson in how to communicate with each other. And was that like a prank that they were pulling on you? I think so. You? I yeah. think the movie was yeah. a, a prank. They are like, right? uh, we hate wilderness movies we hate buddy movie movies we hate fart jokes we hate musicals let's make that yeah right how do we make a good version right. of that so you guys uh learned how to do this together yeah exactly but no of course it's not it's tough it's really hard work to be in a band and remain remain creative and, and mm-hmm. inspired and you know a lot of that comes with putting away your ego and pride but also your feelings you know about mm-hmm. you know not, not being able to get them hurt easily robert how many times does andy bring a song to the group and go, I got it. Our next big single. This is going to be hot. Straight to the top of the charts. And you're like, ooh, this is a real stinker. Well, luckily, uh, we've never had any singles. So we've never had to really let that down. <laughs> okay. we've, uh, we've existed at a failure level. That's the key. That- is if you don't ever have a hit song, <laughs> you never have to try and write them again what what is it i mean what how can anyone ever even have a hit song i don't even know question you know what i mean like what do you do you just put the stuff out and hope people like it right that's what we try you know uh but do you is there ever anything where you're like i actually think this could be really popular no, I'm I'm definitely more interested in like the self-inspired part of it, where it's like if I can start feeling like, oh man, I love what we're doing here. If it's making me really really excited, which is tough because we're our hardest critics um, to get there. But oh, do you need harder critics? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you, you if, if <laughs> let these guys know <laughs> um, how I, badly they're doing. Yeah, totally. I think too at a younger age we were told like oh this could be huge this could be the next Coldplay and we were like no no but also I wouldn't mind a yacht mm. and then it doesn't mm-hmm. happen and you're kind of you have to put that out of your you mind. guys don't have yacht money yet not yet you gotta get yacht money we're just working where do on you it. get it oh I mean I, look I had my own TV show so I have yacht money oh up the butthole but you guys uh wait do you ever write a song and you're like 
man, I, I, I think this could be on Grey's Anatomy when, when someone's walking in slow motion down a hallway. Do you know that I've had a song on Grey's Anatomy? You have! And did you know that the scene that happens is a, is a short man getting leg extensions? <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> to be the soundtrack. It all came true. <laughs> What, uh, uh, was it a, a cast member or was it a, a guest star? One-time guest star. Mm. Shorter man. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and that was it. And it was a, a song, really lovely little acoustic song, and he got some longer did it, legs. Did it have anything with legs in, in the lyrics at the all? The song was called What a Pity. <laughs> 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 Isn't it weird that they didn't use ZZ Top's legs totally. for that, you know, and then make ZZ Top change the lyrics to "He's got legs," and then just a little wink, like, "Hey, <laughs> it is weird." We all know that, that. It's she's got legs, yeah. but in this for Grey's Anatomy only, I'm going to change it. He's got legs. Wink, wink. That is weird, isn't it? It's weird it's they odd. didn't do that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, uh, that Grey's Anatomy money. Right? Oh, oh, the, big. T- well, it's not yacht money, but. Did you get you you got a mechanical royalty on that, right? Yes. Did you get a yes. performer royalty? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Um, good, good. So I mean, that's wow. That's a that's a lot of uh, buco dolores, as they say. Dollars mm-hmm. a year. Yeah. Dollars. U.S. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. They, Are they? That's still playing multiple somewhere. dollars. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. That's incredible. So the new album is a black mile to the surface. Now you guys are going to be playing songs from this. Yes. Uh, during our show, is that correct? Yes. And you're going to be playing what I like to call I. You know, when one doesn't have a full band, you don't have the full Manchester Orchestra with you. I like to call it acoustic. I think that's a really, really good way to put it. Yeah. So you're going to be playing acoustic versions of these songs. Yeah. From the are they uh, going to be from the new record? Or yes. You, great. Yes. Okay. New songs. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that. We have Robert and Andy from Manchester Orchestra, uh, and uh, coming up a little later on the show, we're going to have. Oh, this is interesting. A statesman. I, uh, this is the show where we talk to interesting people, yeah. and you guys have proven yourselves. Well, I think you're you. in the interesting uh, people Hall of Fame thank in the you. Pantheon. It was the dog story. <laughs> it truly, it? truly was. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, so, but that, that is, uh, I'm constantly interested in, uh, politics and, uh, uh, people who have these types of jobs where, uh, the, the people of their country look up to them. So we'll be asking them a li- or th- that person some questions, but, uh, coming up right now on the show, let's welcome our next guest. She is a photographer. Oh, great. So she's in the arts. So you have a little something in common yeah. with her. Uh, please welcome Sissy Montgomery. Hello, Sissy. Oh, hey y'all. Hey. hey, how are you? Are you from the South? I am, yes. Yeah. So nice to see you. What part of the South are you from? I'm from Anderson, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Anderson. Do you guys know that? I mean, I'm not from... The, I, I was born in Savannah, Georgia, but I oh, were you? left there very, very quickly. Well, uh, if you start in Savannah and you just sort of go like east on Autry, you'll hit Anderson, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. <laughs> okay. That's what we like to say. Anderson, the sea where you'll get to eventually. <laughs> <laughs> right. So d- d- do you find every person before they pass away, before they expire gets to it? I hope so. So far, so good. <laughs> I met a lot of people in my life. Yeah. Oh, how many people would you say you've met? Well, I think um, it's a little bit more every year, and so that's exciting. So You're of, adding to the mm-hmm. accumulation of people you've met. That's right. It's exponential, and in 2016, I met 342 new unique people. Oh, my God. That's almost uh, one a day. Almost. I guess you took a week off. Did you travel? I met no one during the Christmas holiday. <laughs> oh, really? You like are you, you like to keep indoors during Christmas? Well, you know, it was chilly, and I just I, I was seeing people I already knew. Oh, okay. Yeah, usually the holidays are a time where we gather loved ones around us. Yeah, my and- kith and kin. Sure, your kith and kin, of course. Yeah, so I can't be meeting your kith and kin. Sure, of course, yeah. That's for the new year. (laughs) Right. How many people have you met this year? So far, 341. Oh, my goodness. Okay. hopefully tomorrow, pass the record. Please, someone say hi to me. Well, uh, please meet Andy and Robert over here. (gasps) Oh, hi! Hi. You've broken your record! Oh, amazing! Hello, nice to meet y'all. Although, I guess you didn't meet them in Anderson. Oh, shoot. Ugh. All right, this does not count, but it is nice to see you. It is nice to make your acquaintance. I have three Southerners here. That's uh, incredible. I don't know where Anderson is. Oh, where's it? Is it is it close to like Columbia? Um, it is pretty close to Columbia. It's what we call. It's in the upstate. It's not far from Greenville, which is a huge up and coming town. Yep, been featured in many articles about how to revitalize a mid sized American city. Um, is that something you're interested in? I love articles. <laughs> oh, okay. What would you call an article writer? <laughs> I'd call him an article writer. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. And if then that's... if they're my good friend, I might call him Matt. 
<laughs> right. I don't know if it's emasculating. I can't really tell. No. So what brings you out here to the West Coast? Well, I've just been um, on a little bit of vacay. I wanted to go to Universal Studios and see those Hogwarts nightlights. But, um, Did you get to see them? Oh, yeah. They're beautiful. Oh, really? Is it like the Aurora Borealis mm-hmm, or But on the Hogwarts Castle. Mm, okay. Very gorgeous. But mm. I'm just... Have you guys been to Hogwarts? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we go often. Have y'all yeah. been sorted? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, which... Have which, you been sorted into a hybrid house? You know, the, sort of like your main sign and then your rising sign? Yeah, yeah. Like that movie we were talking about, we scored, that's with Daniel Radcliffe. So oh, yeah. So we have to spend a lot of time with him, and he, he made Did us, he sort you personally? He did, yeah. Oh, my God, that's the dream. What are y'all? What are y'all? Griffin, what house? Scuttlebugs? Griff, Gryffindor? Oh, oh, you're a scuttlebug? No, that's very rare. Yeah. Very rare. <laughs> I I am genuinely curious about this. When when kids go to the Harry Potter at Universal on either coast, that's right. and they get sorted, do any of them cry if they're put in Slytherin? Um, I imagine they probably do. Yeah, I do, think so. Is there some sort of thing where they go, uh, let's not put anyone in Slytherin? Oh, yeah. That, well, actually, there. I think that online there you do get put into Slytherin. Do you? And I think that it, there's, it's even based on an algorithm about like how many people are logged in on that server. You know, we could really <laughs> unpack this. Oh, wow. But, I guess we could. But that's not why you're here. No, no. That's not why I'm here. You're a photographer. I'm a photographer. But you're on vacation. You wanted to go to Hogwarts, see the yeah, lights. I just wanted to get out here, see those lights. You've achieved that. Well, let's talk about what kind of photographer you are. Well, I mean, this is the show where we talk to interesting people. Oh, thank you. So uh, I would imagine that your profession is interesting uh, in some sort. Well, I like to think so because I am capturing a unique moment in every person's life, and I'm about to get back to my busy season, which is why I needed a little vacay. Mm. I take almost exclusively people's senior portraits. Senior portraits. Oh, okay. As in for their senior year of high school, not right. senior citizens. Right, right, right. Although, Although, if you there could be some crossover. There, there could be if you're in some sort of you are an elderly person, but you're in a Billy Madison situation, and you want to commemorate fulfilling your father's challenge so that you can get your job. You might want to take a senior portrait, and I think you should come to Sissy Montgomery. <laughs> Do, would it be called a senior senior portrait in that case, or? Just um, for expediency's sake? I think it, I'd just say double senior portrait. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's probably the best way yeah, to do it. Yeah, I think it. that's quicker. How many people in history have been in a Billy Madison situation? Have any of us here? Any of you guys? We certainly could because neither of us really officially finished high school. Oh, so. my neither gosh. Neither of you finished high school. I, I did online, but Robert never got close. I didn't have time. No wonder <laughs> you're in a band and married a sister. <laughs> yes. You never went to college. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Does that mean y'all didn't get a senior portrait? That is correct. <gasps> oh, this. This is horrible. This oh, is terrible. Y'all. If only we knew someone. I wish. Well, we do know each other. I just don't know you and Anderson. You got you got to come through, Anderson. And let me take your portrait. Oh, you know what, Robert? Mm-hmm. I see something really beautiful for you. It's sort of my favorite. It's uh, just you with a crisp light blue background, and you're leaning against a column. Well, would I have to enroll in Anderson because I do have classes that I need to finish? Um, you know what? It doesn't matter to me where your high school diploma comes from. You're, and, you oh, know, a good. lot of people are commemorating the beginning of their senior year, so y'all could still come on in. Yeah. yeah so you're not hired by the school itself. No, no, no. You, you, the children the, or their parents. The, oh, yeah. Specifically hired. Now, right. Nowadays, you got to have – you want to have, like, a nice package of photos to commemorate what kind of activities you did, Scott. So, mm-hmm. like, Scott, what were you into in high school? Well, like I said, I was in that band, uh, but uh, I was also... Okay, so here's what I'm seeing for you. It's a crisp blue background, Okay. and you're leaning against a column, but you have a little bit of a post bag with some letters... The letters that are all addressed to your future, and the post bag is perfectly covering your genitalia because otherwise you are naked. And that way, Whoa. that photo would commemorate you being in the naked postman. Oh, I, oh, I get it. Oh. Okay, a post. I, it's, I, it was not making sense to me. Was it because did you not hear you're leaning against a column? <laughs> oh, no, I did hear that part. By the way, what kind of columns are we talking about? Are ionic. Doric, ionic, baby. All <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know it. Yeah, okay. And you know what? For you, Andy, because you have this lovely rugged beard, mm-hmm. I see instead of the crisp blue background, perhaps one of our um, forest backgrounds, and oh. you'll also be leaning against a column. <laughs> but In the forest? So, yeah, so it fits in. We, we wrap some ivy around it. The beard? Mm. Oh, 
You gotta come in. I, ne- I was you guys are on the same column, page. But hell yes, the <laughs> ivy can lead into your beard. If you want to do some sort of like poison ivy situation, that whoa. sounds incredible. This, an Uma Thurman. Type oh, I'd thing. love to see that. Oh, I'd love wow. to see that. You know, we can combine activities too. So you know, maybe for maybe for you, Robert, mm-hmm. while you're leaning against that column, you got a little old timey taxi driver cap on. You know, just things that matter to you because the senior and you're photo, pointing at it and you're like winking like. Like you get it. You yeah. guys get it. You know. Because the important thing with a senior portrait is to make relatives immediately understand what you were doing in high school, what you're up to. Exactly. And, and maybe give them gift ideas for Christmas. Because that's the, the hardest part about tough. Christmas shopping is knowing what your grandchildren are into. So it's if you're tough. like, oh, he really likes Taxi Driver, be prepared for Taxi Driver gifts yeah. for the rest yeah. of your life. That's right. That's right. And leaning against a column tells people you're classic and you're ready for adulthood. <laughs> right. Do you ever get people taking these blue backgrounds and then, you know, uh, when you shoot against a blue screen, it, it can be easily replaced with digital technology? You know what? I have seen that. I have seen that. Mm. And I have, um, I follow some of my former clients on um, on their social media and I've seen some fun backgrounds and some disappointing backgrounds that they've put in. Disappointing ones, really? Yeah, some of them that just make the column not fit. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like the disturbing the sanctity of the column. I mean, like I was telling Andy. Seems important. It can be in the forest, but let's make the column make sense. Maybe it's some sort of uh, forgotten relic. Sure. Maybe it's like ancient Greece. Exactly. And uh, there's been a nuclear war. And, and Thank you. And, uh, you know, all of the underbrush has grown up all over the but column. But if you just are in front of a big slice of pizza... Why is that column there? Yeah, exactly. So wait, just a big slice, not even a big pizza. So it's just a giant slice. I got one of those, you know, one of those like cartoon drippy slices. <laughs> I guess I haven't really. Um, okay, seen. Scott, imagine the the Ninja Turtles are eating pizza. Okay, this okay. is gonna take a minute. Uh, Michelangelo, Donatello. Yep. It's definitely Mikey. He's pulling a slice away, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know how it's got that good cartoon drip. Oh yeah. Okay, freeze frame. Just that slice ding, on a blue ding, background. Ding, 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 ding. They should have used that song in that movie. That would have been great. That would have been amazing. And then ZZ Top could have gotten involved. I would love that. Mm-hmm. You know what? Actually, um, that uh, speaking of ZZ Top, I yep. did. Um, sometimes people feel a little bit dwarfed by the column, and they want this to be about their mom, their sort of a momentous achievement. And they want they want it to be like, look, I have dominion over the column. That's right. right. And so I do offer in my prop box. I do have stilts, so people can be <laughs> taller than the column, almost like leg extensions. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I guess stilts are just sort of like leg extensions. <laughs> right. Yeah. The poor man's leg extensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The poor man's <laughs> temporary leg extensions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you could do that. Now, I know I've been talking to y'all about columns because I do feel like they are the classic look, but we do also offer you standing by a giant version of the number of the year you're graduating from. Okay, so, uh, I mean, back when I was in high school, these these were giant numbers. You had 88s, 89s, the 90s, and then it dipped into these, like, little tiny, you know, it's like you're standing next to a one. Well, I got to tell you, Scott, that was a great year for me because that one looks a lot like a column. <laughs> oh, boy, I bet. <laughs> so it was like an ionic one? That's right. And then I had to abandon it. But, you know, now we're into 17. Well, I well, hope I guess you kept that one. I, you know I did. <laughs> so now I'm going to have I'm gonna have my students uh, come in, and they'll lean against a column and an eight. Because, mm-hmm. as I was saying, these are rising seniors. Sure. Oh, right. yeah. So they'll be graduating in 2018. Right, yes. They're rising seniors. They're rising seniors. <laughs> right. Okay. That's a that's a term maybe I haven't heard in oh, regards yeah, yeah, to yeah. high school. Rising it, seniors. Rising seniors is like, you know, you remember this thing where it's summertime and you meet, like, your mom's friend at, like, the nail salon and she says, now, Jessica, what grade are you in? <laughs> That's just a name I picked. <laughs> yeah. So just a, a hypothetical Jessica. I was just thinking of like a common name from the late 80s. But um, that was always a difficult conundrum because do you say the grade you just left or the grade you're about to go into? Sure. There's that weird black hole of months of you're not in a grade. So you'd have to say, well, 
I just finished third grade, but I'm going into fourth grade. But instead, you could say, I'm a rising fourth grader. <laughs> okay, and everyone will know what that means I, yeah. and nod That's as right. if to say, we all agree this we is a term. We all agree this is a term. <laughs> right. Okay, wow. So uh, how many people uh, want to stand next to the number? Because I, I would think that uh, that would be really fun. I mean, It's pretty fun. It is. Um, it's fairly popular, but, you know, some people in our youth-obsessed culture don't want to have any photographic evidence of the year they graduate from oh, high school. So sure. it's actually been on the decline, which yeah. is really guys, sad to me. Do you actually. guys think about that in a band? I mean, uh, rock and roll is all about youth. And isn't it ironic that like we, we prize youth? Isn't it ironic? <laughs> that column sure is. <laughs> but... Uh, we prize youth when it comes to our rock stars, uh, and and yet you know they're all dumb shits when they're young. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Totally. So, uh, we, but when they get older and fat, when they have more to say, no one wants to listen. No one wants to listen anymore. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Yeah. That's why we we actually lie about it, and we have columns and numbers on stage with us. Well, <laughs> you do. So yeah. you bring columns and numbers out with you. We have every from show. The beginning, y'all. Please, I I love taking photographs of rising seniors, but I would really make an exception, and I would love to take a band photo for y'all. Do you want to come? Would you like to be like a tour photographer? Well, I guess I could because I really am only used in the months of August to October. Right. So if you, you could have go, a lot of free time, I have a lot of free during time. during December. You're with your kith and kin. I'm with my so kith and kin. Please don't do it. And then it. in the rest of the year, I'm trying to just up my numbers of meeting people but in man. Anderson, but. I could, Oh, that is a that is an offer I you don't think I can refuse. I have another idea. I mean, uh, you guys' record album covers are pretty simple. I mean, Cope was just the word Cope with yeah. black. Mm-hmm. This new one seems like a fuzzy gray picture or something. Yeah. Yep, that's, you know, what, like, that's what you're what, going for. What if your next record, it was you two guys, one of you's leaning up against a column, Holy and one shit. of you is leaning up against like a 19 or something. Really good. <laughs> both of us winking, right? Yeah, yeah. Bo- yeah. both of you winking well, like, you're in hey, ZZ Top, it's, uh, it's our time now cargo pants okay sure love it yeah because you love them yeah okay good because i need the photos to represent your true hearts and mm-hmm. what you love taxi you know cap on Taxi cap definitely uh just you know holding a big record of the oc super tones yeah maybe a newspaper that has the date of that dinner that you were talking about on it <laughs> that would be cool yeah <laughs> I think this is... <laughs> Can we get Maisie but, the dog and Maisie the child? Yes, yes both yeah. of them. Yes, Maisie the child, Ryan and Maisie the dog, and it's, and all, in a, it's <laughs> all in a basement because I think that's the only place y'all spend time. And it's <laughs> like you, Andy... <laughs> Andy, you you have like a double picture where you're looking at both Maisie the dog and oh, cool, like a hologram, the, and you're like, which is which? Which is which? And it's like, boy, 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 boy. And, and then in the liner notes, we have a fun photo of you um, dressing Maisie the dog in a little girl's outfit, and, <laughs> and vice versa, and, and vice versa, your daughter has a, a bone in her mouth, and you're going kind of like, <laughs> and you're like pointing at a dog dish and saying, eat this, eat this, <laughs> this and your really daughter's cool. crying. Where and, were you guys four months ago when we were putting together the artwork? Well, I, I mean, was in I, Anderson, you were in Anderson, East and I was Audrey. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy! I'm sorry, but but then we could put in some fun bubbles and and you know so some fun bubbles. Do you mean like uh, like a thought, thought, bubbles? Bubbles. thought bubbles? Oh, oh great, thought great, great. Bubbles. Yeah, bubbles. that communi- those communicate ideas in a really nice way. I think so because what I want when people see a photo is to just I don't want any question marks. Yeah, you don't want question marks above people's heads when they're I, looking at the photo. You want them in the photo. I want them in the photo, and then they say, hey, this person was curious. <laughs> sure. Well, look, uh, 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 Sissy, uh, I want you to stick around. We need we oh, need to – what we're going to do now is, uh, uh, Andy and Robert, I want you guys to play uh, one of your songs off the new record. Sure. Um, and we're going to go to a break from that. Uh, tell us about this first song. What are, what are we going to play? This song is called The Gold. The Gold. Yes. Is this about uh, the Olympics? Yes. Uh, 96. The, the 96 Olympics. Atlanta, yeah. The, <laughs> in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. So all of your songs seem to be Atlanta sports mostly, based. Mostly. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so this is off the new record, A Black Mile to the Surface, just came out on Friday. Uh, this is Manchester Orchestra doing an acoustic version of The Gold. Here we go, fellas. One, two. <laughs> I don't think I love you anymore 
That gold might change you You don't have to hold me anymore Our cave's collapsing Oh, I don't want to be me anymore My old man told me You don't open your eyes for a while You just breathe that moment down Forty miles out of east, still in north from my old man's heart attack And I believed you were crazy You believed that you loved me here anymore the black hills the collie it wasn't really dangerous for us we just catch you coughing what the hell are we gonna do a black mile to the surface well i don't want to be here anymore it all tastes like poison you can't open your eyes for a while and you just breathe that moment down Forty miles out of homestake and I'm trying to translate you again And I believe you were crazy And you believe that you love me You and me, we're a day Beautiful. Thank you. Thank Beautiful. You. I like I like music. I do too. Scott, yes. you, you got to have that bubble in your photo I take of you. <laughs> that just says, I like music above? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize I was taking a photo, but I'm into it. All right. Let's go to a break. When we come back, we'll have more Sissy Montgomery, the photographer, more Manchester Orchestra. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, can you feel it? Tux season is right around the corner. Oh, Emmys, Oscars, I'm nominated for them all. <laughs> oh boy, there are only so many opportunities in life where you get to wear a tuxedo. You gotta enjoy it when it comes around. When your big day or special event rolls around this summer, you want to look just as great as you feel with suits from theblacktux.com. That is right, they're back! With high-quality rental suits and tuxedos delivered to your doorstep, The Black Tux gives you a new way to rent. Plus, with their free home try-on, you can see the fit and feel the quality of your suit months before your event. Months, I say! 
And the best part is it's done completely online other than you trying it on at home. It's not a Tron situation where you're doing that online. This is real life, baby. The blacktux.com lets you create your look or choose from tons of stylist selected outfits. Suits like these, let me tell you something, they usually retail for $1,200 or so. That's uh, me pricing suits. That's what I would pay for a suit that looks this good. But at the Black Tux, they start at $95. That is a fraction of that. Anyone has $95. (laughs) Anyone on earth. Go up to anyone. They'll have $95. Try it. It's fun. If you have any questions or issues, their expert customer care team has your back every step of the way. And after ordering, your suit is going to arrive 14 days before your event. So if anything is less than perfect, the Black Tux is going to send you a free replacement right away. When your event's over, just drop your rental back in the mail, shipping free both ways. Easy peasy. <laughs> Stand out at your event for the right reasons with the Black Tux. To get $20 off your first purchase, or your or just a purchase, doesn't have to be your first. Hey, come on back, stay a while. To get $20 off your purchase, visit theblacktux.com slash bang bang. That's the Black Tux. Dot com slash bang bang. You're going to get $20 off your first. <laughs> Why do I keep saying first? Because it's in other ads. But no, it's just a purchase. Enjoy. Second purchase, third purchase. Enjoy your purchase. $20 off. TheBlackTux.com slash bang bang. Good luck at those award shows. <laughs> God, I hate. What do I hate more than talking about it? I hate going to it. Yeah, that's right. The post office. Going to the post office is such a drag and not the fun kind of drag, like a drag show or a drag race. It's the bad kind of drag, like a drag. I mean, the lines are long. It's always out of the way. Well, that was me. Years and years ago. Stamps.com has been advertising for so long that that was me almost as a little boy. Uh, But thankfully, there is a new solution to the problem of the past of the post office. You can avoid the hassle of the post office and instead mail everything from postcards to envelopes to packages, domestic or international, with Stamps.com. Com. That's right. The venerable stamps.com. Stamps.com lets you buy, that's good, but even better, print official. What if they just let you buy postage, but they never let you use it? That would be a bad business plan. They let you buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. We've talked about it before. It's just a CPM situation. Just a click, print, mail, and you're done. And unlike the post office, stamps.com never closes. That's fun. It's like Denny's or something. In your own office. Turn your office into a Denny's. Plus, uh, Stamps.com is going to send you a digital scale or a digi scale that automatically calculates exact postage, helps you decide the best class of mail based upon your very specific needs. You even get discounts that you cannot get at the post office. When is the last time you went to the post office and they're like, hey, let me give you 10% off? Never. They suck. Stamps.com brings all of the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your old fingerprint maker. That's right, your fingertips. We use Stamps.com for a long time we have here, and right now you can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer. It includes a four-week trial, shorter than the O.J. Simpson trial, I'll tell you that much, plus postage and a digital scale, digi-scale, Without long-term commitments, just go to stamps.com, click on that microphone. You're going to see a microphone at the top of the homepage. Click on that bad boy. Type in bang bang. That's stamps.com. Click on the microphone. Enter bang bang. It's that easy. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. 
<laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. Uh, Manchester Orchestra, the album is called A Black Mile to the Surface. What uh, Atlanta sport does that have to do with? The Atlanta Falcons. Oh, great. Yeah. Is that because in the comic book Captain America, the Falcon is African American? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Uh, Robert and Andy are here with us, and uh, their record just came out. We heard a beautiful version of The Gold uh, right before break, and uh, you'll be playing another song soon. Uh, and we also have Sissy Montgomery, the photographer from Anderson, South Carolina. Anderson, South Carolina. When you saw the Matrix trilogy, mm-hmm. were you just so thrilled when they kept repeating Anderson over and over? It may- me so happy and I think that might be why so many people come through <laughs> because they're looking for that place that they kept talking about in the Matrix trilogy that's right and you know what it's just playing in their ears over and over and over again and it's mm-hmm. leading them there it's like a subliminal sort of suggestion that's to get right there. yeah fantastic and uh, you're a photographer you take senior photos but you're willing to take photos of us yes I did graduate high school but I did not graduate college so maybe we, you know, well, I could. Do you want like a photo of your rising senior year of college? <laughs> yeah, that would wouldn't be such a bad thing. Yeah, I think it'd be great. What kind of what was different about college, Scott? <laughs> well, I was not in that band. Okay, so you put your clothes back on. We get rid of the <laughs> satchel of letters. Do I have to deliver those letters? <laughs> no, they're they're a metaphor. Remember, they were all addressed to your future. Oh, it's all about right. seeking your future in a senior. Portrait. So maybe maybe I'm receiving the letters though now because it is the future. The future has happened, and I'm opening them and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, I get this. Oh, I understand now because now that's the present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And am I thinking of a song while this happens? No, you're just thinking music. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure at this point. I thought okay. it was supposed to. To say I like music. Well, that's Scott now. That's oh, me now, yes. That's the I'm even sorry. future. No, hey, it's all right. Yeah. Thankfully, your skills have made Scott finally like music. <laughs> and uh, you've we've secured your services for Manchester Orchestra's next album. That's right, as long as it's between the months of January and uh, July. No right. problem. <laughs> so January and July. And then come July, you have a couple of very busy months. I got a couple busy months. Then December, I'm with Kith and Ken, and then could be right back with. But what him. about in, in in like November? Oh well, I just assumed that maybe that one month by itself will be sort of like not helpful in a consecutive working relationship. Mm, I see. Like in a tour, I guess I could take uh, you know some some stock photos that we could use. We're, we're going to Europe. So, have you ever traveled abroad? I have not. So you could come over and and experience some. Y'all going to Finland? Uh huh. (laughs) Count me in. I feel as if spend uh, Christmas in Anderson with you, so we could meet up in November. Y'all think you're my kith? That is so sweet. Yeah, you guys could be part of the kith. Oh, be part of the kith. Uh, The kith in the hall, maybe. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Um, I I really think that some of the foreign countries, some of the fans in there would really appreciate your aesthetic, your whole kind of aesthetic. Maybe the French. I think so, too. I think that it is sort of very uh, French nouveau what I do. <laughs> what are your influences? Um, well, uh, Sears Photos um, and Robert Maplethorpe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So, wait. Do people have, like, dildos up their butts in your photos? No, or? no, no. Just his relationship and fun friendship with Patty Smith. <laughs> oh, okay, great. And his early um, Polaroid work because I do always take a quick Polaroid before I take a permanent before I take the uh, real digital photo just to make sure I've noticed why do photographers do that you know we just like to see hey what would this look like if it was in goo before I make it right yeah well you know I mean that's why I went to see uh, you know those alien prequels (laughs) what does the alien look like when it's in goo hey I like this alien it's real scary what a tight thriller can we go back and make it about stuff in your eyeball (laughs) Well, this is great. I uh, I think. How do you have a successful business? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. I am Anderson's number one senior portrait photographer. How, what's the competition? I have just two other ladies, and mm. um, there's enough market share for us all to have not yacht money, but sort of like dinghy money, <laughs> which is great for just going out on the water. Oh boy, yeah. Are you are you sort of buy any kind of? Uh, uh, if, if you got enough gas and you got a trailer hitch, you can get down to Charleston in just a couple hours. Sure, I, I would assume anyone with enough gas could get anywhere. Why you're right. <laughs> that's and that's a great way to look at life, I think. Yeah. With enough gas, you can get anywhere. That's right. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We all better remember that. We better. Well, let's get to our next guest because uh, this is very exciting. Uh, we have a statesman coming to the show. Have you ever met anyone in any position of politics or power? You know what? I did have the honor of photo- of uh, 
taking a picture of the mayor's daughter. Mm. And so uh, the mayor came in, and she was a, a lovely lady. And then what we did was pretty fun is we had her daughter also wear a mayor's outfit. Like a sash? <laughs> And a top hat. That's right. And we got out two columns, put a ribbon around them, and had her cut a big a, giant big scissors. Big giant scissors, oh, so man, that maybe she so could follow fun. in her mother's footsteps and also be mayor. Right? Did she have any interest in that? Nope. But it was a fun time for me and her mom. <laughs> oh, I bet that was fun. She hated it. Uh, Robert, I don't think they're speaking. <laughs> Robert or Andy, have you ever uh, played music for the president or anything like that? Uh, no, we haven't played any music for the president. Mm -hmm. Any um, any politicians at all? Any. Uh, we did a um, – we played once for Jim Beam, the, uh, the, the alcohol company. The alcohol company. And well, the that's guys great. from uh, Miami Inc. were tattooing people behind the stage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Uh, well, that's – I mean, that sounds amazing. Thank so, you. It was. You know, so <laughs> don't be nervous. Miami Inc. is sort of like the elder statesman of the tattoo reality shows. Especially mm -hmm. in Florida. Yeah. I liked Kids Inc. Was that a show where kids got tattoos? <laughs> it should have been. I kept waiting for it. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's get to our next guest. He's a statesman. I don't know where, uh, but please welcome Lord Dingle. Hello. Hello, Hello Lord Dingle. Yes, I'm the Lord of Wales. Lord Dingle. Wales? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're Welsh. No, 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 no. Not the, uh, no, I'm sorry, not the Wales. I'm the Lord of Wales. The, uh, Aquatic mammal Wales. So you're like an undersea lord no, of I the live, denizens I, of the deep? I am an above ground lord of the denizens of the deep. I oh. live in Finland. You live sorry, in Finland. Sorry, not that Finland. The other Finland. The the land where fish live and they all have fins? Oh, no, um, yes, it is the land mass above... Okay, so you know uh, Scotland. Yeah, sure, we all so, know Scotland. So go off the coast of Scotland. Don't get all the way to New York. Stop. Stop before you get stop to... Stop in the middle and it's there's hard, a... It's hard to stop on the water. Oh, you, you're telling me. You can kind of circle around maybe, it's but extremely it's... extremely difficult. But you can't just break and come to a sudden it's stop. very hard. Also, the ocean is moving most of the time. <laughs> Really? When is it not moving? When it's frozen. Ah, right. Yes, yes. let it go. Yes. Um, oh, have you? I I rather enjoy that film. Do you really? The you Tale like of Two Cities. Yes. Okay. Let's Lots not get of water let's in. Let's not get get off track because I'm I'm interested in in what you're talking about. You're you're not some sort of Aquaman or Submariner. No, no. Uh, that lives underwater nope. half the time. Human man water. cannot breathe below the water. Uh, how long can you hold your breath? Not long enough for my subjects to be able to have a long conversation with me. Uh, I would imagine it's a one sided conversation unless you're able to communicate telepathically. Uh, no, I can understand them. I just can't talk back to them. I see. I, I see. think they can understand me, but it's rather But it's a lot of body language? Yes, it's a lot of whales just sort of like mm. roll, barrel rolling around You need the some water. of these thought bubbles above your head. Yes, I've tried communicating with, um, have you seen that film Arrival? I have, yes. With yeah. a series of images that I thought they would understand. Oh, can right. I ask you something? Are you taking them down laminated? Oh shit! That explains so much. You've been just taking pieces of paper down. Yes, and I. And I, I th uh, to answer your previous question, about a minute and a half is how long I can stand under okay. the water. That's a, that's pretty standard. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate being called standard. I've been called much worse. So oh. I take the picture and I swim down under the water and I hold it there and I and I, and I and it will say like, "What do you want on it?" And I'll just wave it around. Right. By the time I get back up. It's, it's disintegrated. It's, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. So mm. you're just asking fish and whales specifically. Whales, fish, I, so not fish. Fish are different jurisdiction. Right, right. But you're asking them what they want? Yeah, and I think I'm acting in their best interest, but to be totally honest, Scott, I am guessing a lot of the time. But you're the lord of them, and they all agree upon this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I am born into a family that is the lord of whales, undisputable. I see. So when you go down there, it's a big honor for the whales mm -hmm. to There's see There's generally them. a lot of them around, mm -hmm. barrel rolling around, trying to hold still, not holding still. Right, trying to come to a complete stop, mm -hmm. unable mm -hmm. to do so. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. So uh, what have you been able to accomplish with the whales? Trying to fight global warming right now. Very big, very big topic right now. We have an inconvenient sequel, I think, out in theaters, or at least coming out in theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an EPA here who says it's all a, a crock of horse pucky, if you know what I mean. I do. I know what a horse pucky is. Where do you, where do you stand on the issue? We are in favor of it. In favor of global warming? Yes. We are trying to fight for global warming. Hmm. You see, if we can melt more of the ice caps, then more of the land will be covered in ocean, which is more territory for whales. And uh, the whale population is shrinking, and we need more room for whales. So I guess I never really thought about it. And though. you know what? They are so big. Yeah, they're one of the biggest animals. I would, yeah, the, the biggest mammal. 
Really? I guess I never thought about that. When I think of a whale, I'm like, it's big, but it couldn't be the biggest. Oh, it's the biggest. Mm. Um, oh, I bet. Picture a giraffe. Oh, uh, hold on. This is going to take a second. Donatello, uh, Michelangelo. <laughs> no, this is a turtle I'm thinking of. Yes, uh, we can start with a turtle. Take Let's a start with a turtle. So take a turtle. Okay. Now make it orange. Okay, now got it. Now the body of a horse. Okay, now got stretch it. stretch the neck. Okay. Now you're at a giraffe. <laughs> I'm there. Good. Okay. You got me. Yes. Now take the giraffe. Okay. Now blow into its mouth. And good. Now the neck is getting really big like oh, a balloon. Oh, yeah. Yes. Big necked giraffe. Uh -huh. Throw it in the water. Okay. Paint it blue. Got it. Now it's a whale. Wow. That's big. Wow. Very that big. is very big. Yeah. I never thought about it that way. Mm. Wow. So uh, what if you, uh, you want more global warming? I, I didn't think about this. Global warming is bad for humans because I guess we're all going to die, but that doesn't mean all the fish are going to die. That's true. And it's, it's hard for me as well because in, in fighting for global warming, my particular ancestors will be worse off. Yes, Your they, ancestors will. Yeah. Well, the people that I, oh, yes. Right. Well, uh, future <laughs> I ancestors. I guess your descendant. Yeah. Descendants is the word my that we. Do you? I'm, uh, wh I think wh what's the called, word you use? It's like rising ancestors. Rising right. ancestors. Yes, the rising yes. ancestors. Yes, my rising ancestors will be worse off because mm, global warming, bad for land mammals. Global warming, fantastic for ocean creatures, unless you're coral. Right, yeah, but, that's going to be a problem. But then what are the fish going to eat if the coral is not around? Well, you know? my, uh, uh, I, I worry the whole ecosystem is going to just collapse. That's very uh, long-sighted of you. We tend to be a short-sighted delegation. Oh, yeah. How long do whales live? Mm, three to five years. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> yes. I did not realize that. I guess. Ooh. What was the whole thing about free willy? Like, who gives a shit then? It's true. If it's well, only going to be around another six months. Fun fact, had to use multiple whales in the filming of Just that movie. Just to get through the filming. They kept dying during it. Wow. I heard that's what happened with three men and a baby. Is that true? Yeah, the babies kept dying. Uh, oh, not growing up, dying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Isn't dying just growing up? I mean, wow. yes, in a sense. <laughs> I well, mean, growing up in heaven. Oh. Mm. Boy, that put a smile well, on your face. Yes, my people don't have a concept of heaven. Oh, wait, there is no whale heaven? No, they are uh, strictly agnostic people, the whales. Mm, interesting. Yes. What, so what do they think happens when you die? Just there's nothing? Well, you turn into baleen, and then <laughs> another whale comes and eats you. Ah, mm. it's very much like Buddhism. Oh, yeah, I guess so. But specifically, only ever turn into bale, uh, to baleen or krill. Mm. You turn into small ocean plant, not coral, mm -hmm. but other ocean plant. Yeah, the, you, the more specific you get about ocean plants, the less interested I am in this, I have mm, to say. Fair, let's get fair. Back to, let's get back to the whales. Okay. Do, you, uh, do they have emotions? Yes, they do. Yeah, do they ever cry or blubber? Oh, they cry, they blubber, they sing, they rage, they rail. They rage like Rage Against uh, the Machine? Do they, you, are you guys Rage Against the Machine fans, by the way? Massive fans, yeah. Yeah, massive. What do, what do you think about Audio Slave? I liked Audio Slave. Mm -hmm. I, okay. What do you think about Audio Slave? I think they're all right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not in favor of slavery. Oh, okay. Of any kind. Not, Audio or otherwise. Okay, this is, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're thinking of people or animals. What do you think about enslaving animals to make them do your bidding like SeaWorld does? Hmm. How do whales feel about that? Well, uh, as you can imagine, whales are not particularly keen on SeaWorld. Mm. We do, however, like the image it presents of an entire world that is the sea. So mm. it's, it's really a split 50-50 crowd. And again, when I come to the whales and I say, SeaWorld, do you want me to take on that? Is that an important issue? And I take my sign underwater and I right. wave it about. Uh, and I don't know what they want. So I kind of, uh, I mean, you guys have this problem with your politicians. I'm kind of on both sides of every issue. On right. the off chance that one day I understand what the whales want. And they're like, nope, you've been wrong about this position. Mm. And 90 seconds in, you're back up top. Yes. Yeah, you can't hold your breath uh, yeah, anymore. And, you know, five years in, my entire population is new. Yeah. They've all died, they're new whales. I guess that's one way to lure whales into SeaWorld is they think the concept of a world f just of the sea, like a water world kind of thing. Sounds fantastic. Sounds good, yeah. Like, what if I told you there was a place you would go called Mountain World? Oh, wow. I would. I'd be there. Yes. Boy, would I. That sounds great. All all the worlds are mountains. Yeah, but then you get there and you find out you're trapped. Oh, in a, in a no, mountain. I hate this now. Yeah. Well, what that happen? Well, that's that's much how it is for my condition. Wait, can, Wait, I, can I, I blow into her mouth and turn her into a whale or anything like that? There's going to be a few steps in between. Okay, okay. so picture, picture her. Okay, I'm got here. It. Okay, now blow into her mouth. Wait, can I be against a column? <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. go ahead. Lean against, against okay. the column. I well, noticed you brought, brought a some. column. Yeah, you know, got to come prepared. Oh, right. All right, so lean okay. against the column. Okay. Okay. Right. okay, now blow into her mouth. Here we go. <laughs> okay, now, oh. uh, now picture her back is harder. A picture her back is her harder? Her back is harder. Okay, And great. now she's green. All right. Okay, now you're at a turtle. 
Okay, I okay, got to a turtle. But Stretch a very out. big turtle. Very big turtle. Stretch out the neck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> body of a horse. <laughs> oh. I'm going to give you some of those leg extensions to give you the body of a horse. Oh, well, thank Kid, you. Do you mind singing that song? No, not at all. Okay, yeah. you sing the song while we do this. Yeah, uh, you ready? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, I'll help you pull. All right. Uh, we're stretching, we're stretching, we're stretching. Oh, this is legs. very painful. Oh, okay, okay, stop, stop. I was wrong. So in my head, this was an image thing that we were doing to help you get to, like, picture a thing. You didn't want me to actually do this? Well, in reality, it appears that we're pulling apart a woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Yes, and um, well, you know what? And now I already look like a, a green horse, so uh, with a with a long puffed out neck. You want to keep going, or you want to stop at green horse? Well, I don't know. What do y'all think? I mean, I'm digging it. I like the green horse. You look. think it's a good look? Yeah, I wouldn't. I, we're stretching. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, 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 there stretching, we go. stretching. Oh. Oh. Hi, y'all. Hi, how y'all doing hey, down y'all there? Hi. Oh, oh yeah. wow, look at that. Hi. Hey y'all, uh, listen. Um, from up here, I just I could see you all got uh, pretty little scalps. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No one ever talks about the top of my head. Oh, you know what, sir? Yours is very standard. <laughs> Good enough. Wow, what a great compliment. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> How's mine, by the way? Oh, yours is lovely. Oh, thank you so much. You know what? Yours looks like it has a great future ahead of it. It looks like a rising scalp. Maybe a thought bubble could appear above it. Oh, yeah. Blue, 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 blue. Oh, wow. Wait, you have the power to do that now that you're a green horse? Well, who knows? I'm just trying to explore it. I guess wow. my powers are endless. Wow, this is incredible. Uh, well, I mean, you know what? I think we need to go to a break, uh, but... Uh, I think so. <laughs> you do? Oh, thank you so much. Well, uh, it's standard to go to a break at oh, this point. Is it, is it really? Yeah, it oh, really is. Oh, wonderful. I wouldn't yeah. want to be on the one episode that didn't go to a break. Oh, yeah. I feel it was somehow my fault. We really want to do it. So tell you what, uh, Manchester Orchestra, Robert, Andy, uh, do you want to play another song to take sure, us to break? sounds great. And what is this one called? This is called The Alien. Okay, and is this... Uh, is this about me, y'all? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Are you sure? Is this about Positive. Maybe, maybe the last Starfighter, or who's this about? That's right. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, you've been amazing. <laughs> okay. You've gotten all of them. All right, here we go. This is Manchester Orchestra, an acoustic version off the new album, A Black Mile to the Surface. This is The Alien. The lights were low enough, you guys. Swapped your conscience with your father's medication Limped from Rome to Lawrenceville And on the way wrote out a self-made declaration When you got to Pleasant Hill You forced the traffic to erase your family demons Made a pact with you and God If you don't move, I swear to you I'm gonna make you Do you need me? Do you need me? Do you need me? You felt some guilt that you would even let him touch you Can you hear me? What's your name? You could not speak, just laid amazed at all the damage And as the high school's letting out All the kids are saying the same thing that they used to
you guessed Hospital food, there's never enough medication The doctor asked about your ears He said your mom said you were made from revelation The revelation never scares me if you came from your drunken dad and a pair of scissors you just finally let him go Or did you mean to take out all those people with you? Didn't mean to Didn't mean to Didn't mean so much better than the music that I am used to hearing from my people. Like whale songs? Yeah, it's a lot of... Yeah. A lot of Yoko Ono style. Yes, stuff. very much so. Yeah. Hey, I know that you sound like Hans Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The Inception soundtrack. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, tell you what, let's go to a break. When we come back, we'll have more from Manchester Orchestra, more from Sissy Montgomery, and also Lord Dingle will return. Uh, can you I, stick around? Oh, I'd love to. Okay, great. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang. You know, if you're like a lot of guys, and I hope you are, I sincerely hope you're like a lot of guys, <laughs> but if you are, you can probably think of a million things you'd rather be doing than shopping for clothes, right? I mean, getting there to the store, that's no problem. I got my hot rod that I've been working on all weekend, tooling around in that. Huh, I don't care about getting there. Crowds at the mall, I'm excellent in crowds. I do not have any kind of fear of crowds. But here's the problem. The endless browsing of clothes, that's where my knees start to go weak. And I start to say, can I only spend five minutes in this store? Just pick, uh, here's what I like to do when I go to a store. Point at something until someone says, excuse me, sir, <laughs> do you want, why are you just standing here pointing at something? And then I say, wrap this up for me, my good fellow. And then, I leave with it. That's how I like to do business. But um, there's got to be a better way than that, right? Plus, if you go by yourself, you have no advice. You have no one to look at you and tell you, no, that looks terrible. It's almost, it makes you want to wear the clothes you've already previously bought that people have said, hey, that looks good on you. Just wear those out until they disintegrate on your body. But you can't do that. So let me tell you about Stitch Fix Men. Stitch Fix Men. They have reimagined how to find and buy clothes, and you never even have to leave the house. It is that easy. Now, you can leave the house. You can take your computer to perhaps a coffee shop and order from there. They're not saying never leave your house. They're saying if you don't want to leave your house, don't leave it. 
Just go to stitchfix.com. You tell them your sizes, okay? You tell them your favorite type of clothes and you tell them how much you want to spend. Three things you tell. It's like a riddle. Three things I shall say. Your personal stylist then gets to work handpicking new clothes for you based upon your style, budget, and the other thing, the sizes. Five items are delivered right to your door. Bing, bang, boom. You try them on at home and you only pay for what you keep. Wow. Shipping free both ways. So anything you don't want, you send it back. You just send it back and go, here, you keep this now. I don't want it. There is no subscription required. It is easy. The shipping is free, so why not give them a try? I gave it a try. That's right. I got a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to tell you something. There was some stuff that didn't fit all that well on me. And I said, you keep this. I don't want it. They were like, well, you don't have to be a dick about it. I was like, well, I'm sorry. That's just my personality. They said, well, you know, we don't like you. Anyway, you'll have a better experience. Uh, get started now at stitchfix.com slash bang bang. Stitchfix.com slash bang bang. You're going to get an extra 25% off when you keep all five items in your box. That is stitchfix.com slash bang bang to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash bang. Bang, bang. Hey, everyone. Scott Aukerman here. I do want to tell you, in celebration of our 500th episode of Comedy Bang, Bang, we have created some awesome new T-shirts. That's right. Complete with art by the very talented Bruce Tang. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for this. The shirt features many of your favorite CBB regulars. Grab yours at podswag.com slash CBB 500. Comedy Bang, Bang. We're back here. Manchester Orchestra. Uh, the new record, A Black Mile to the Surface. Are you guys touring as well? We are. Yep. We're going to go start a tour on September the 4th, and it goes through October the 7th. Is that 7th. Labor Day? I think so. Mm. Yeah. I think the day after. Day no after one, Labor no Day. No one would have us on Labor Day. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. And then going all the way to October, so we're talking like a month. Yeah, yeah, about that. And mm -hmm. then a couple weeks off, and then we head overseas and finish out the year there. Mm -hmm. Is it an exciting time for you when a tour is about to start? Is it like, oh boy, we get to see our, our people? Yeah. Or is it like, oh, I've got just st st a stage fright? There's that too, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't toured in a, a really long time. We haven't done a full band U.S. tour in mm -hmm. close to three years. So oh, it, wow. there's an exciting element to that for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Have you been working on patter in your head of like, okay, at this point I say this and I talk about this song and I say this. No, Are you the types like who the do the same list. thing every single night? Like, you tell the same stories. Well, like, one time I saw Roger McGuinn of The Birds three nights in a row, and he told he the, the exact same, same story. It's sort yeah. of maddening sometimes. Yeah. Usually what I'll do really is I'll just, there will be, like, I've told the Grey's Anatomy story mm. on stage before. Okay. And, and then well, that So can, not a scloozy. Okay. <laughs> well, that wasn't the scloozy. <laughs> Okay. Well, so the scloozy was something else. The scloozy oh, was, was the all about your record. Song. Your, yeah, That's what gentleman. it was. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, but no, that drives me crazy too. When I see bands that will do the exact same, like, mm -hmm. you know, thing every night. You want to call anyone out? Sure. <laughs> what band do you want to say? Hey, stop doing the that. Kings of Leon. <laughs> Kings of Leon. You are on fucking notice. You know the Kings of Leon. <laughs> do you? What? Yes. It's not, now these are not the actual like uh, royalty having to do with lions. Oh, then no, I don't know who you're <laughs> okay. talking about. Okay, yeah. The Kings of Leon are. Oh. Okay. Between you and me, I would also like to call them out. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm Kings of Leon, just because you are big, beautiful land cats, does not mean you can treat uh, average people in a disrespectful way. Hey, Sorry. don't beat yourself up. You're not average, you're standard. <laughs> well, well, thank you. So <laughs> the Kings of Leon are actual lions, yeah. but you, you, are, <laughs> you are the Lord... Of the um, whales, no, but you're the, a human. Correct. It, are the king of the whales? Is is that a whale or a human? The uh, the king. There is no, there is only a prince of whales. Oh, uh, right. Yes. He's not yet old enough to become a king. Okay. And is whale that actual... monarchy works differently than human monarchy. Right. Okay. I'm getting that. Because yeah. normally, in a human monarchy, if the king died, the prince will become the king. Right. I see. Now, I understand. Now, in a whale monarchy, the king dies and the prince still exists. Go up to the prince. 
blow in his mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> bigger, stretch oh, okay. bigger. A lot, by the way, enough. a lot of your metaphors have to do with blowing in someone's mouth. Well, there's only so many ways you can communicate with a whale. That's the one that I found works quite well most of the time. <laughs> well, that also may be because you're running out of breath when you're underwater and you need to... Do you think I could stay longer if I didn't communicate so much by blowing water <laughs> yeah, air well, into the whale's mouth? Although some would say that is a way to hold your breath longer is to blow out tiny bubbles. That's what Don Ho sang about. Did he? Do you, do you play any Don Ho covers, by yeah. the way? Yeah. 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 How, how many? Per six, set. Six to eight. Six to eight per set? Great. Yeah. Depends. <laughs> I didn't say per set, by the way. I said per set. Oh, we play six to eight percent of the oh, songs. Oh, of your songs are Don Ho covers. Yes. Okay, that's where the confusion lies. Yep. Uh, how you doing up there, sissy? Um, I'm doing good. I'm just wondering now I'm a giant green horse. If I'm going to have some sort of monarch over me or if I get to be like queen of the green horse. As far as I know, you're the only green horse. So. That's true. So, yeah, you're a state unto yourself. Huzzah! <laughs> Hosa? Hosa, yes. I see you coming to being a monarch quite naturally. Hosa! Hosa! That's like what make... monarchs say. Regular people, or uh, and I do commoners. mean commoners, they have to say huzza mm. because they get the last vowel. <laughs> right. The proletariat. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's you're very unique, so you're not standard at all. Uh, thank you. You're the opposite of standard. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks, everybody. Hey, is it all right if I chew on this lamp? Uh, I mean, it's one of my possessions. Okay, I, I won't. I'll honor, I'll honor your sense of ownership. What about this vent? Uh, again, that's part of the building. We're leasing. Oh, okay. The, so, are, are you getting you mind hungry? If I chew on the lamp. Uh, I didn't think I wanted to, but now that it's on the table. I'm... Yeah, I mean, can somebody please just get to chew on a lamp in our once in our dang lives? Scott, have you ever chewed on any of these lamps? I guess I haven't. I mean, I just never even popped in my head. I... Oh, does it need to pop in your head with a bubble right now? <laughs> it might, yeah. Do you mind taking a picture of me against this column you yeah, brought? Yeah, exactly. Lean against it. By the way, are you going to be able to actually take photos anymore? That's what you I was didn't wondering. touch my hands. You grabbed me by the wrist, which is a better place to, to grab, so I still have I my full opposable thumbs. I haven't looked down there. You're like a green horse with human hands That's instead right. of hooves. Adding I think to my freakishness. I think it looks great. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's great. Can you still play guitar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Are you are you gonna do that right now? Are you gonna tell Are you gonna tell these people because you and me are Kith that I play guitar? I just found out during the break. You guys were talking during the break, and you yeah, play guitar. I does. do. Well, let's hear a little bit of it. All let's right. hear the most complicated go. song you can play. All right. Here you go. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> oh, not bad. Oh wow, a little zep. Yeah, you know. Here you go. Oh, oh yeah, that's nice. And uh, pretty good, right? Not bad, yeah. That I mean, song makes me wonder. I feel like I'm Ooh. in a guitar center. Yeah. Do you feel like you're walking around a bunch of people just trying something out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I'm closer up on that stairway to heaven now. I got this long neck. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you're a couple of rungs above us. That's I'll tell right. You that much. Tell you what, it looks great. Yeah. I thought it sounded great. Thank you so much. I didn't realize you were a musical uh, person. Oh, yeah. In my senior portrait, mm -hmm. my senior portrait, <laughs> I was holding a guitar, looking at an old-timey music stand with some like sort of weathered parchment music on mm, it. Of course. Um, because I played both classical and contemporary music, so I wanted both to be um, represented. And then I had a speech bubble just with music notes. Oh, wow. Any sort of cartoon pizza? <laughs> In the background? Right. N no, Scott, because, of course, there was a column, and as we know, cartoon pizzas and columns do not make any sense. Right, yes, I forgot about that. Unless it's a commercial for Little Caesar's Pizza. <gasps> I never thought about that. Wow, me neither. <laughs> well, if I ever get to take a photo of a rising senior who works at a Caesar, who works at a Little Caesar's, or is a Caesar, or whose parent... Eating a Caesar salad, even. Eating a could... Caesar salad was born from a cesarean section. <laughs> wow, any of these would apply. Is that the root of cesarean section? I think so. A cesarean section. Mm. It's when you... <laughs> Did uh... you say, mm? <laughs> I, I don't know why I find that delicious, but you guys are chewing on lamps. Thank Anything... you for letting us do that, by the way. No problem. <laughs> Um, so what kind of what kind of music is your favorite? Um, I like sort of like uh, soul searching soul searching um, folk music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you mind playing one? Of, uh, you've written songs then. I have. Yeah, I do have a, a, a beautiful back catalog. Oh, take take this guitar then and okay. play it and play us a song. Play something that you've written. Do you mind singing? I mean, um, no, no, I'd be honored. Um, okay. 
Okay, yeah. This is song, uh, this is a song I wrote when I um when I first decided that I just had to take a photo. <sighs> so this is the the genesis. This is the genesis of your yeah. interest in photography. That's right. Okay, and and instead of taking the photo, you decided to write a song. Well, because yeah, I wanted to commemorate that moment, and I did not have a camera around me. Okay. So this a music a piece of music is just like a photograph for the ears. That's oh, I've never thought That's about the it title that way. of this song. A photograph for the ears. Yep. Okay, and here we go. Would you like me to use a flash or no with this pick? Just why don't you stand there? I promise you won't look ridic. Why don't you lean against that column? <laughs> okay, so already interested in columns. <laughs> This early into your yeah, interest in right. photography was captivating. Well, thank you. It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. To say, Why don't result? you lean against that column? A bright future. Yeah, you do got one. And as you gaze out of this photograph, I want you to never look back. And say, I wish I had taken a portrait somewhere else. No, no. I, I wish I had taken a portrait somewhere else. No, no. Oh, I wish I had taken a portrait somewhere else. No, no. Oh, this column pick belongs forever on my parents' shelf. On my parent shelf. Wow, wow. beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank so, you. So not only were you interested in photography, but you were also thinking of it as a business. Well, of course, yeah. I wanted, I wanted, you know, I hold them there in posterity so that they're there forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that is fantastic. I mean, uh, the three musicians here. I mean, obviously, you're. are, are you a musician? You're not. Mm, uh, caught me, Scott. Wait, you, you, Lord Dingle, you're a musician as well? I get so lonely standing on that one landmass in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Wait, there are no other citizens of... Of, of Finland? Nope. Lord of only just me. I don't oh. know. You know the little prince on that moon? Oh, like right. Like that, but in the ocean. Well, you have the prince, the little prince of Wales as well. Yes, yes. Oh, right. yes, but he's not there. He's, I'm sorry. Okay, right. He doesn't. I, I'm the one. I'm like boots on the ground. Oh, right. But yes, yes, I do fancy myself a bit of a musician. Do you, well. do you do also you play? play it? Yeah, do you play the guitar do, as do well? Do you mind if not I... Not at all, no. Let me just oh, hold on. All right. Oh, oh wow. wow. Here we go. Little, um, Yes, this is a song I wrote. <clears throat> Why can everybody hold their breath longer than me? All my friends under, under the sea. I have so many things I would like to say, but I can't, cause I gotta come up for air every day. Why can all my friends talk to each other? That Will has a brother, that Will has a mother, but none of them can talk to me or tell me what they think. I. Spend all my time with my head in the sink Trying to expand the amount of time I can help my head underwater Ooh. Trying to uh, expand the amount of time I can hold my head underwater Ooh Ooh, wait, can you keep playing? Sure uh, uh you, yeah, do you mind? Are we duetting? No, do no, mind? Oh, do you mind? Oh, do you mind? Oh my god, this is unprecedented <laughs> Oh, little king of the fin, lord of the fin. It sounds like the whales are your kith and kin. My kith and kin. Oh, prince or whatever, lord of the whales. What a fabulous tale! A little man on that land of fin. It sounds like the whales are your kith and kin. I've got so many whale problems You know what I think might solve them A picture with all the whales Leaning, leaning against, against a column Wow! <sighs> and rap breakdown! <laughs> oh, 
Hello, I'm the Lord of Wales. I could tell you aquatic tales of the time I was here under the sea. All of the whales hearken to me. I'm talking baleen. Yes, you and you. Everyone from you to Shamu, get down. It's time to get silly. Everyone, it's time to free Willy. Oh, yeah, taking the mic, of course. You know it's a photographer who's now a horse. horse. Got that big, long ass neck. Anderson, South Carolina, oh heck. Meeting everybody deep of a 342. Meeting you, and you, and you, and you. Taking a pick, you know I got them. I gotta get all those picks against the collar. Hey, everyone, don't change the channel. It's time for the Lord of Aquatic Mammals. Here I am, to be a pig. Everyone knows wells are very big. And if you don't know what they are, here's a hurdle. Picture in your head a turtle. And now, just, now don't laugh. Stretch that turtle into a giraffe. Oh, when we are all rubble, gonna have this thought coming up Purple. as a bubble. You know I want to get with you. Give it up for Mentorster Orchestra. Yeah, that's it. You yes. know I'll never quit. And if there is something to deserve us, wow. we all have to swim a black mile to the surface. A black mile to, to the, the surface. surface. Wow. Inspired. Inspired. Wow, that was that's crazy. A common, that's a common whale phrase, you know. A black mile to the surface? Yes, yeah, when a whale has gone down too deep, <laughs> and you think, oh, that whale, it's like, uh, you what would you call it? Swimming upstream. Oh, if you're wow. You're really swimming upstream. It's like, well, that whale has really got a black mile to the surface on this one. That was incredible. It started as a song that you had written. Mm -hmm. You decided to duet with well, him. Well, you know, I saw that. I saw he was singing about Kith and Kin, and you know I love him. You I got, him. had to jump in there. I had and I had to change the way of the ocean is it's not going to stay what you want it to be it moves around Manchester Orchestra what did you think about that I mean th Blown those away. guys I mean that's I, look I, you sent me your new record and I, I love it but it's I gotta that. say that's, it's no, better than you, anything yeah. on that record I have to say I think you're totally right that was amazing but I think we would have a place for you on the upcoming tour whoa if oh. you would like to come out and open uh, is, our mm. biggest problem is going to be getting you inside of the venue well you know I was wondering um, <laughs> stretch you back yeah and a lot of <laughs> this had it started as imagine the only active parts were blowing air and stretching the legs so I think if I just oh, 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 just oh, like, oh, like a balloon oh. back to your normal self and uh, and then wow. I think hey y'all will you imagine me as not green anymore oh sure uh, so you yeah. want us to ask oh, the like, audience that oh I'm sorry Scott do you do you know how to do that uh, I do, yeah. Let me. Uh, let's see. Michelangelo, Donatello. Okay, so take the color of Michelangelo's headband. Okay, got it. It's orange. Right. Okay, now go down a little bit to his face. Okay, got that it. That part's green. That part's green. Okay, now go to a human face. Okay, that got it. That part's normal color. Okay, I don't know whether you want to say it exactly normal like that. Normal color. That <laughs> face is a normal <laughs> color. I don't, you know what? Uh, that's a little dodgy. Are you, pitch, are you pitching any human? Uh, then no, it's normal. I any don't human know. has a normal colored skin. Uh, I don't know about uh, that. Well, maybe standard. <laughs> Still, let's just go standard. Ah, uh, that, even that I'm not comfortable with. Uh, okay. As you shouldn't be. And, oh, there you are. What? Okay. Hi. You're back. What's, what's fun? You're back, sissy. Hello. Hi, y'all. A, uh, a regular person. Yep. Well, oh, really? But, That's oh, yeah, all? Standard. standard. Thanks, standard person. Doesn't it feel good it does. to be called standard? Well, that was incredible, guys. Uh, what, a, what a moment. Yeah. Boy, I you know, I mean, every week I say this is the show where we talk to interesting people, but I never expect anything like this is going to happen. So this is incredible. Uh, but we are running out of time, so we really only have one thing left to do on the show, and that is a little something called plugs. Plugs! Okay, that was Plugs uh, by Jake and Jared. Uh, Manchester Orchestra, you guys are professional musicians. What do you think? Oh, I thought that was really good. Yeah? Not as great as what we just No, of course heard. not. Nothing could be as good as that. Um, and uh, you guys are going to be opening for Manchester Orchestra? That's right, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I'm abandoning everything else I was supposed to do. Well, what are the whales going to do? We can Honestly, tour for the, whales. the exact same thing they always do. Yeah, boy, you can't tell them or teach I them any new tricks. I literally cannot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so Manchester Orchestra, what do we plug in here? Obviously, the new record, A Black Mile to the Surface, just came out. Yes. How's it uh, doing on the charts? I, well, I don't know yet. Um, usually find that out about a week after the mm-hmm. record's coming out. Okay, so coming out, so uh, will you make a big announcement like, hey, we're number one? Well, that well, hopefully. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not... Uh, do you have a big uh, celebration plan for when you find out you're number one or what? Oh, uh, yeah. We actually have a giant number one oh, that good. we got. Is it Ionic? It is. <laughs> okay. Can I great. tell you what you should do that's lots of fun? Yeah. When you find out you're number one, take a lot of water, mm-hmm. put it in your mouth, <laughs> and then squeeze really hard and blow it out the top of your head. Squeeze what? <laughs> Oh, everything. Oh, they, they don't clamp. have those little whale holes, the bow oh, holes. Oh, then get a column. Get a big ionic column. Yeah, just oh. get a big ionic one. Y'all look great against it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, the tour, where can people get tour dates? You can go to our website, themanchesterorchestra.com. Um, we will be back in L.A. Um, in September. We're playing the Novo. Is that a video? I don't know. I've never heard of that, but that's great. It's new. Um, cool. And then the Observatory. And the observatory. And, the observatory. Um, and oh, great. Okay. And uh, you, uh, is it a, a, a full United States tour? Are it we is. talking Continental 48? We are talking 26 of our favorite towns. Oh, I love that. You going um, to Anderson? <gasps> oh, we'll be there. We oh, are, yeah. We are, we are playing in Columbia, so if you can take the dinghy. If you have enough gas, you might be able to get there. If you have enough gas, y'all can get to Anderson. In Finland? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. <laughs> I would Finland? love it to be true. What? Which Finland? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so go to New York. Okay. Go east. Okay. That one. Stop Got it. Dead Stop straight. Dead, dead. In the or water. Try. Try. <laughs> try as hard as you can. Uh, and uh, what else do you have in the works? Uh, anything else? Uh, it's your time to shine. You can plug anything you like. Uh, you know, Robert, you can plug your favorite movies. Uh, just saw Dunkirk. It was really good. Mm-hmm. How's it, how's it uh, compared to Taxi Driver? It's not as dark, and I did not fall in love while watching it, so it's so not every, up there. every movie you see, you're judging whether you fall in love with it? Well, I would hope to fall in love during a movie. <laughs> oh, okay. that's gonna Are be, you trying to not love people while watching a movie? That's going to be bad news to your wife, I have to say, if you ever see one where you fall in love with someone else. He I has agree. to see every movie with her. Oh, okay. Just look to your right, then. Or your left. I don't know what your standard seating is. <laughs> When you see a movie, uh, Andy, you have anything uh, else you want to plug? That's Any- it. That we've been working on this for the last year, so it just feels awesome that it's going to, to finally. People be are finally announced. enjoying it. That's a great feeling, isn't it? Where people can finally just uh, relax, yes. put on the hi-fi, put on the headphones, and just you know dive right into this record. Yeah. It's a great record. Uh, I, I really want people to listen to it. Uh, Sissy, what do you have to plug? Well, y'all, if you have thought bubbles that say, hey, I like musical theater, but I like for it to never have been thought out, mm. then uh, you should check out a brand new podcast on um, well, on this very network, Scott's called Off Book, the Improvised Musical Podcast with Zach and Jess. Oh, really? What are, who are the people involved in this? Uh, yes. Who is this Jess? And who is this Zach? Well, well, they sound fascinating. <laughs> well, so, you, so you're interested in this? I'm would very you, interested. Would in you this. have this thought bubble? Well, here, let me answer it for you. Uh, it's uh, Zach Reno and Jessica McKenna, and you know you can find them on Twitter at Jess R. McKenna or I guess... Well, uh, uh, let me take a stab at it. Would it be at Zach Reno? <laughs> Sounds good. Would that be spelled in a weird way? Like, yeah. like R- Reno 911? No, or? you'd put uh, it, throw an I in there for you know good measure, like R-E-I-N-O. I don't think it's weird. I think it's just got a column in the middle. <laughs> right. Just it's an ionic just a column I right in, in the, the middle. middle. I'm interested in this podcast. Off book, you say. That's Off right. book. And uh, how many episodes are out right now? Uh, two. Two episodes are out right now, and it comes out weekly? That's right. Oh, my goodness. So you might be on the precipice of a number three. <laughs> There's also a four-minute taste if you're just like, dang, give me one more song. <laughs> and uh, I wonder, you're, you seem like such a big fan of this show. That's would you right. do photography for them? Oh, yes. For every episode? Just yes. a big number? <laughs> well, I would li- I'd like just the number of the episode. Them leaning against it, and then maybe in the background something pulled from the musical world they're able to create. Mm, that's and and is it a different style of music? Uh, well, there's a live piano player, and the music varies. And there's Ooh, uh, is there rapping? Sometimes there's rapping in segments, and sometimes just the music itself will range in classical musical theater or pop music. Or mm. you guys should go on that 
podcast after what you Because you did. guys are talented. Well, well, I would say we're definitely not as good as them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think I could. But is it? Is it just them? What if I grow so bored of podcasts with just two people on them? Oh, well, you're in luck. They have a fungus with them every week. A fungus. A fungus. Ooh, I do oh, like no, fungus. Wait, no, Scott, no, I have Scott. some aquatic funguses to tell okay, you about. Yeah, would you just <laughs> step no, no, on no, coral no, too no, much? Scott. You just take that fungus and you blow in its mouth <laughs> and then expand it till it's um maybe like one of your favorite comedians with oh, a okay. normal skin color. Like who were in the first two episodes that people? Uh, can... Paul F. Tompkins, and Mary Holland. Oh, those those guys are great. And Aren't they're in they? the first two episodes. Okay. Well, this is great, and people can uh, find this every week. That's right. Okay. I love this, Lord Dingle. Do you have anything to plug? Yes. Get in your car and run the engine. <laughs> okay. Melt those ice caps, baby. All right. Melt them out. (laughs) Uh, I want to plug, boy, we're coming up uh, pretty soon on the Now Here This Festival in New York. Uh, I believe that is in September. Yes, September uh, 8th through 10th. And uh, there will be live comedy bang bang going out there. And that'll be really fun. And uh, along with some of your other favorite podcasts uh, will be out there. uh, And uh, so tickets are available at nowhearthisfest.com. All right, that's all I want to plug. Let's close up the old plug bag. Talking about bags and bags, I'm talking about openly bags, I'm talking about bags and bags, I'm talking about openly bags, I'm talking about bags and bags, I'm talking about openly bags, I'm talking about bags and bags, I'm talking about bags with bags. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much. Manchester Orchestra, a pleasure to have you guys on. Thanks Did so you have fun? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, uh, and you guys listen to the show as well, right? We do, yes. Uh, thank you so much. Always nice to it meet a fan. A, it was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Sissy, so good to meet you. It is so nice to meet you. you got to come back to Anderson, so it counts. I got to. Uh, so glad you're back to Standard. Uh, and uh, Lord Dingle, good luck with you. Oh, thank you very much. We'll need it. Come to Finland anytime. <laughs> no, thank you. All, All right. right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for listening, and remember, this summer, discover the new movie, The Big Sick. From producer Judd Apatow comes a new comedy based on the real-life romance between Silicon Valley's Kumail Nanjiani and grad student Emily Gordon, friends of Comedy Bang Bang, who are on this very show talking about this very movie. They fall in love, but struggle as their cultures clash. Well, I mean... Also, something else really important happens in the movie, but they don't want to spoil it. Don't miss the film that has critics raving. It also stars Ray Romano, Holly Hunter, A.D. Bryant. Get tickets in select theaters now. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive produced by Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Colin Anderson. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.com